On the last episode of Battlefield 1 History, we took a look at the Madsen machine gun. As the first machine gun to be mass produced, it saw over a century of use thanks to its amazing ability to stand the test of time. Today, we're going to see the history and development behind the French standard issue rifle, the Lebel 1886. Now let's take a look back into the 1800s. All weapons currently around the world use some form of cartridge that would produce smoke when fired. Obviously, this had some major issues. When you had a line of soldiers continuously fire one after the other, it would fill the battlefield with smoke from the end of the muzzles. Unnecessary visual blockage that made spectating the battlefield rather difficult. A French chemist by the name of Paul Vieille came up with a new propellant powder in 1884. The powder, when fired, produced little to almost no smoke. This was a first major step into modern firearms. Now keep in mind tactics in warfare during this time period took into account the smoke created from the rifles the soldiers were using. When you take out this variable, you clear up the entire battlefield, making it easier to see the enemy, but also vice versa. Tactics would obviously need to be changed to accommodate for the now absent smoke. When the French first achieved this, they tried their hardest to keep everything under wraps. It was a futile attempt, as in the end, word did get out, and the technological advantage the French had would soon become available to almost, if not all, major powers. By January 1886, the French war minister urgently requested the implementation of these technological advances into one whole rifle, and thus, the Lebel was born. Now, as for the rifle itself, it was developed by government commission led by General Tramond, but Colonel Nicolas Lebel, who as we know the rifle is named after, only contributed to the design of the flat-nosed jacketed bullet or the new 8mm cartridge. At the start, his name was attached to the bullet only, but the name Lebel tended to stick with the rifle and eventually came to be known today as Lebel 1886. The Lebel was a robust weapon whose reliability was spectacular even in the harsh conditions of trench warfare. The rifle was extremely accurate out to 300 yards, and even after distances after that, the Lebel still possessed tremendous stopping power thanks to the bullet it fires. But it wasn't without a few drawbacks. The Lebel had a tubular internal magazine capable of holding 8 rounds in total. Now, in hindsight, this was good, considering the bullets were safe from contamination like mud and dust from outside, but it drastically increased the time it would take to reload the Lebel compared to other rifles using a quick action of inserting a 5 round clip into the receiver. The sights on the Lebel were pretty small and stayed low to the barrel. Now, this isn't an issue when it comes to closer range engagements, but when you're pushing a few hundred yards, the sights just can't compete. There was also no wooden handguard for the Lebel. After prolonged firing, the metal on the Lebel would get extremely hot. With nothing protecting your hands from the scorching metal below, soldiers would have to touch the hot metal with their bare hands, if they wished to keep firing the Lebel. On top of all these negatives, the main issue that the Lebel suffered from was the lack of a safety. Now, the Lebel was originally intended to be carried around with an empty chamber. But in the heat of the battle, I just don't see how this is logical by any means. A soldier would have to rechamber a new round every time they want the weapon to be fired. This obviously was troublesome in tense moments and is extremely primitive compared to the ease of use of turning off a safety like other more modern rifles. As for French soldiers, if a soldier was caught with a round loaded into the chamber, they were severely punished. Having a weapon live when not in combat endangers both you and everyone around you. As if someone happened to accidentally touch the trigger or bump the weapon hard enough, the rifle could go off. Eventually, by the time the First World War came around the corner, the French were outright bested when it came to infantry rifles. Weapons like the Gewehr 98 were simply superior from a technological standpoint, but this didn't stop the French one bit. The French used the Lebel as their main infantry rifle throughout the duration of the First World War, despite it lacking in some departments. The Lebel rifle also came in some variants as well, such as the Lebel 1886 Carbine. As the name suggests, it offered a more cut-down and user-friendly version of the Lebel. The Lebel also shipped overseas to French colonies to help defend as well. 
After the war, France entered into a depression, much like many countries in the late 1920s and 30s, and the production of better rifles slowed down tremendously until the eventual approach of the Second World War. So there's a brief look into the French Lebel rifle for you. It was a joy gathering footage and learning some new information about the weapon, as the French just seemed to amaze me at every turn, especially in aesthetics for their weapons. I know a particular someone will be pleased about this, so cheers to you my good man. Well then, if you enjoyed this week's episode of Battlefield 1 History, make sure to drop a comment down below as to what I should cover next. Maybe the flare gun or the trench periscope? Who knows? Anyways guys, it's been Bloodhound, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.